this is mine. I, I, I like this. Never teach questionable techniques and never, never, never put winning over the health of an athlete. We don't crack back block. That's not in our scheme. We talk about it, but we don't do it. I, I think it's it can be effective, but I think it's dangerous. I think it's uh, it's putting kids at risk. Something that football doesn't need today. Uh, never put what put winning over the health of an athlete. That's kind of a tough one too. You know, this year we had we had a great running back. He got he got hurt in the second series of the level four game and never never finished the game. He was hurt all season and every week it was it was. I was tugging at myself, should I let the kid play or not? And he had a, he had a high ankle sprain. <clears throat> Couldn't keep him off the field. But it was, I, I talked to his mother. Are you okay with him playing this week? Yeah, coach, we'll keep an eye on him, watch him. Okay? I, I was, I don't know if you even knew about that, Nick, but I was very tuned into his family and whether the kid should play or not with an ankle sprain. Without him, we weren't as good. There's, there's no doubt about it. Go to the next one. Play all kids at lower levels. And I think you've got to give them meaningful time, uh, playing time. Now, I, this guy right here, another one of my assistants, Dave Butzler, he's my head freshman coach. They did something this year that is phenomenal. And I'm going to talk about it here. Uh, I tell them, I told these guys, hey, you got to play all those kids. You don't know when this kid here, he's this big right now, but by the time he's a senior, he's this big, and he doesn't want to play football anymore because he had an unhappy experience as a freshman. So we had 53 freshmen out this year, and uh, they debated, debated on how to give them quality playing time. And I should have Dave talk about it, and if I, if I screw it up, please stand up. I'll fix it for you. Dennis, did I tell you? Here you are, man. I told you, right? <laughs> okay. Here's what they did. Here's what they did. They took all the freshmen and seeded them into teams, Big Ten teams, Badgers, Gophers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, they put, you know, you got some good freshmen, you got some that are not so good. So you, they kind of seeded it so that every one of those teams had enough quality players on it so that when they call for one of those teams and it went out there, it wasn't a, a total disaster. And it was like, it was fun watching them, them play this year because you'd hear a coach holler, Gophers, and 11 guys would run out, 11 guys would come back. Then they'd holler, uh, Buckeyes. But then when the opposition got close to the goal line, they'd holler, Badgers. And that's when the best guys would go out there, right? But they had it seated so that that all those kids played in meaningful in meaningful plays and work put on a team that was terrible. And I thought that was ingenious and it was the parents liked it, the kids liked it. Did you like it, coach? It it is a struggle, but it, what, what it allowed us to do, it, it's always a struggle, the, the balance between playing to win and letting getting all kids quality minutes. What we did by doing that system, we committed early to getting kids quality time instead of, you know, oh shit, I get two minutes left in the game, now we gotta have to the benches so everybody can play. We just committed early to playing all kids. And then, then what it did is it, it allowed us at, at the end of the game, if we had to play to win, we, we, we had already played everybody for quality time. So yes, I like it, but it, it's it's a fire drill on the side. Yeah, it was, it was pretty hectic, but I don't know if any, maybe you guys have done something like that, but if, if, you're, if you're a young head coach and, and you know everybody tells you you've got you to give kids quality playing time, that's one way to do it right there. I thought it was ingenious. It was awesome. Okay, go to the next one. This one here is, uh, this one again is something that, that I talk to a lot of people about it. And uh, this really bothers me. Uh, you look at it Saturday morning, you, you, you look at the scores, and you see a 72 to nothing, 62 to nothing. Uh, that ain't right, guys. That's not right. <coughs> it's not good for your players. It's not good for the opposition. And it's not good for the game of football. 
This year, I can think of one of our games where the score was uh, 36 to nothing at halftime, and our starters never played the rest of the game, and the score ended up 42 to 14. Coach came up to me after the game. He said, Coach, thank you for calling off the dogs. I said, well, that's just the way it needs to be. That, that team was a playoff team. I'll tell you a quick story of something that happened to me early on in my coaching career. Kind of a funny story. You might get a kick out of it. But uh, I was coaching up in Crandon, up in the Northern Lakes Conference. We had a Saturday afternoon game against Elko. Uh, we get there, Elko. We kick off to Elko. They're in the I formation. They run an option, pitch the ball. The kid goes for a touchdown. We're behind 7 and nothing at the start of the game. At halftime, the score is 42 to 7. Second half starts, and I told all my seniors, all the starters, I said, you guys take your shoulder pads off, you're done. Boy, they were pissed. And we want to play more, coach? No, you're done. Score's out of hand, you're done. So they're mad at me. There are four Elko kids that got hauled away by ambulances in that game. The fourth one, I went out onto the field, and Elko's coach met me there, and he was madder than hell at me. So you heard all our kids, they said, Coach, we're just playing football. Sorry. We won't score anymore. Go and tell your kids. We were running a wishbone at the time. I said, we're going to hand off to the fullback every down. So he goes into the defensive huddle, and I heard him. They're going to hand off to number 42 every play. Tackle 42. Three plays later, we score another touchdown. Now, Alco's stadium, field, whatever you want to call it, wasn't very sophisticated. They had a rope or a barrier. And all of a sudden, I feel somebody tugging on my back. And here's some, some, some guy from Elko. He's mad than hell at me. What the hell are you trying to do? Hurt all our kids? I said, I'm not trying to, sir. He leaves. So now the score is really bad. I take a sophomore quarterback, and I say, go into the game on offense, on first down, take a knee. This is, this is like midway through the third quarter. There wasn't the 35 mercy rule at that time. Take a knee. Take a knee on second down. Take a knee on third down. Take a knee on fourth down. He says, are you kidding me? I said, no, I want you to take a knee on all four downs. Did it? I can hear people booing in the background. Seniors are mad at me. The opposition coach is mad at me. Opposition parents are mad at me. Next time we get the ball, Jimmy can do the exact same thing. On third down, he takes a knee. I feel somebody tugging at my shirt. They turn around, and here's the uh, chairman of the school board from Cran. That was his kid playing quarterback. He says, what the hell are you trying to teach my kid? That's not football. So that's a predicament I found myself in. The opposition, the coach, the parents, our parents, our seniors, everybody was pissed at me. But you've got to do something. You've got to keep scores under control. If, you, if, if scores continue to get out of whack, kids aren't going to play. And, I, and, and, and you don't know what it's like until you've been on the opposite side of one of them. And I've been on that. I've been on that. And it hurts. It hurts because you've got to go back in that locker room and you've got to convince those kids that it's worth coming back to play football again after they just got slapped <coughs> to nothing. You gotta walk out of that locker room and convince parents it's okay to let your kids play. Hey, you're right. So be ethical. Get a lead, protect the lead, but don't let it get out of hand. Next. Teach safe and proper tackling every year. Film it the first time you do it. And then save the film. Thank God we've never had to use it. But if a kid would get hurt, neck injury, back injury, whatever, and parents would get an attorney and you'd get a lawsuit slapped on you because of this injury, and they say it was because you, you did not teach proper tackling, you have that to fall back on. And I have this website here down at the bottom. I, you head coaches probably got this from Pete Carroll a couple a year ago. If if you don't if you don't have that, write this down. You may not have to write the whole thing down. Maybe just go to Seahawks tackling. We bought into that. Their technique it's fabulous. The kids like it. The coaches like it. You can actually teach it and practice it without pads. 
It's kind of a rugby style tackling. That's what we've gone to. We love it. Coach, they teach it at the, at the freshman level. And the thing that was really neat, you know, there's some basic drills that we do every day with this tackling. One of our home games is our youth football night. And so we let all the youth football teams from Chippewa Falls come into the game. They get on the sideline before the game. Uh, so they're standing on the sideline. And our kids are going through these basic drills, the Seahawk tackling drills. And we have asked the youth football uh, coaches to do the same thing. And those kids' eyes were like this. Oh, that's the same thing we do. That's what we do. That's the same kind of tackling we do. I think it's awesome. Uh, I know that tackling, <clears throat> tackling has been kind of the, the thing that parents worry about, that administrators worry about, and coaches worry about teaching it properly. This is, this is a recipe right here, guys. It's awesome. Okay, next one. We have these things, EFD drills. You, you, I guess you can call them effective football drills. That ain't what we call them. We call them every, every day drills. <laughs> Line it. You're going you're gonna to get on the board, you're going to do the slide, you're going to do shoots. Defense is going to do tackle, turnovers, and pursuit. Backs and edge, you're going to do ball, whip, ball drills and routes every day. I really believe you have to have some EFD drills. And for the group that, these two guys right here, I think it's the most important. <coughs> Doing these EFD drills prevents a lot of bad habits from occurring because they get healed every day right here in the EFD drills. Kids know what these drills are. Sometimes they go and do them on their own before the coaches get there. However, I don't like it. I like coaches to be there and monitor it. I don't like to have kids pick up bad habits because the coach isn't watching them. But you got to have EFD drills. You got to have a plan. Next one, coach. I believe you need to run a system. And again, now this is my belief. I believe you need to run a system, not plays. I hear coaches talking about. I like to run this play. I, like, I saw this play in the Packer game. I like that play. I saw the Seahawks do this. I like that play. I think you need, you need to have a system. When I played college football, I played for Monty Charles. He was a shotgun. That was his system. He coached in the Canadian Football League, threw the ball under the end of hated it. I was running back. All I did was pass block. Hated it. But it was a system. He got out of there. Got a new coach in, ran a double wing in college. Different than what we do now. Kind of liked it. Then I got into the wishbone. And the thing that was neat about running the system, starting when I started running the wishbone, is I always had somebody to fall back on. When Barry Switzer was the head coach at the University of Oklahoma, I would go down there, I'd work their summer camps. So I had to tie in with their coaches. And if I had a problem, I would call them and say, Coach, what do you do here? There are other coaches in the state of Wisconsin and the Minneapolis area that ran the wishbone. We could communicate. Okay? If you don't have a system, if you're just running a place, I don't know how I don't know how you can put things together. We're a double wing team now. Again, back again. And uh, you know what, I, I don't know, I guess it's maybe kind of a little club type thing where I know that if we have issues, I have, I know there are other guys that are running this system I can shoot back and forth with. So I, I think you need to have a system, not plays. Doesn't matter what that system is. Doesn't matter what, what, what type of offense or defense you run. I, I don't think it does. Championships have been one running every style of offense and defense. Again, this was set out of clinic. Learn one style inside and out and make the early adjustments to it. You run the I formation. You can run a shotgun. You can run wing T. You can run any types of offense. You can run an even defense, an odd defense. You can run a radar defense. Championships have been won by all of them. There is no magical offense, no magical defense. 
Here's what you got to do, though. You got to get in there and you got to learn it inside out. Learn everything you can about that offense and that defense. And then tweak it periodically. Okay. This is one of my all time favorite statements right here. And I use this on my coaches almost daily. The good thing about football is all the things you can do. The bad things, the thing about football is all the things you can do. Okay? Here's how this works. We start talking about a blocking scheme, and the next thing you know, well, we can do this, we can do this, we can do it. Yeah, we can. Now we gotta teach it, kids gotta learn it. That ain't a good thing. Let's slow it down. Okay, let's not let's not get it let it get out of hand on us. Keep things under control. Go ahead. 